Hello all, it's uh, Northern Brewer here and uh, this Brew Day video is going to be making Jalapeno Saison. <clears throat> so uh, it's another one from the Brooklyn Brew Gang. Uh, it's from their, well the recipes in here, uh, we're going to be doing the Jalapeno Saison Mild. And I would, we bought this uh, sort of a whole, whole uh, ingredients list in a box. Well, apart from the jalapeno, from a, a store in the in the uh, in in the UK near Leeds, uh, retails for around twelve ninety nine, um, which is pretty good. Obviously, it makes a gallon, which is two point three six liters. Uh, just started getting into my saison, so hopefully uh, this can be a nice entry point into making the beer. So what do you get in the box? Uh, have a look. So you get some Belgian uh, candied sugar. Um, you get the hops and the yeast. Uh, this one they use Pacific Jade hops and um, Belgium yeast. Uh, it's script really of who actually provides these or anything, but. Um, <clears throat> Hopefully, a uh, good quality, and then obviously we've got the malt, which is uh, needed for this, all crushed and milled already in a vacuum seam sealed bag. It's anything like the recipe you're looking at: uh, some Belgian Pilsner malt, caramel, and uh, that's about it. So. So curious that the uh, the box didn't include any of the spalts hops. Uh, I thought I'd have a look. And then close inspection, it gives you uh, a web address on the box of where to find the instructions. Um, so I went online and uh, they have it on there. So you just uh, go to their homepage and uh, search on the right hand side for the correct one. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm doing the right addition of the hops at the right time, etc. And uh, make a good effort of it. So, so after uh, heating the uh, mash water up to 71 degrees, uh, you now add the uh, grain. And then we're just going to uh, turn this over to make sure there's no parts of the grain which aren't wet. Once we've done that, we're going to put the lid on and we're going to keep it in a temperature range of uh, 62 to 66 degrees. And that helps to produce the fermentable sugars that will turn to alcohol. Um, when we add our yeast. Okay, so that's done. So I tend to pop the lid on. And uh, actually I like to remove it off the heat, um, which I'll do in just a sec, because I have to use two hands. And that way it's not in contact with the, uh, the metal off the burner. So every 10 minutes for an hour, uh, we just take the temperature of the wort. Um, I like to stir it just a little bit before I do that. Um, essentially, like I say, we want to be keeping it between 62 and 66 degrees. So as you can see, it's uh, shooting up there. Obviously, you're going to try and avoid <laughs> touching the bottom of the pan because that's... Uh, going to be slightly uh, skewing results given that it's been in contact with the gas. So it's just about falling short, if not bang on 62. 
Um, it's good to take it from a range of different places throughout your pot, just so you're getting a, a better understanding. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop it back on the gas for uh, about 30 seconds and take it off and then leave it for the remaining 10 minutes and check again. So, so very quickly, uh, the mash has come to its uh, 53rd minute mark, aka uh, one hour mark. And now I'm going to heat it up and I'm supposed to be stirring constantly until the temperature reaches 77 degrees. In the meanwhile, I'm heating up my sparge water to uh, 170 degrees, which is... 77. So I'm going to get off and better get cracking doing this. So uh, the first thing we did uh, when, when it was finished was we poured this through the sieve into the pan and then I just poured the pan into here and just sat the, uh, the grains in the sieve on the edge of that. <coughs> So what we're going to do now is sparge, so I've heated the water up to 77 degrees and essentially all you're doing is very slowly just circulating the uh, sparge water over the grain bed in the sieve and this, uh, this process basically drains all the grains of all the sugar which are collected in the pan below. <clears throat> so you do this a couple of times, <clears throat> um, essentially I'll be transferring this sieve back onto the, the pan which I collected the, and heat the sparge water in and then pouring all this back through once more time to rinse the, bait, the bed of grains of all their sugars. So you just repeat this, you just fill it up from over here. <clears throat> until you've completed it all. Here is the wort. It's uh, basically been circulated through twice now through the grain bed. Um, the bottom of the uh, <laughs> bottom of the sieve was hitting the bottom, the, the, well basically the top of the wort so it wasn't really filtering out so I just popped it on this pan and poured the rest through. From the jug so that's all empty now <clears throat> so i'm going to transfer uh the work that's left in there well actually i'm going to put it all into my my boil pan actually and then start to bring it up to the boil so uh the recipe calls for uh the work to be brought up to the boil uh, and that's when you uh basically your time starts of boiling it for an hour so uh, first of all, uh, it asks for us to split the hops into two, and these jade hops, never heard of them before, but they smell absolutely beautiful, and it's funny, I've had uh, quite a few saisons, and it wouldn't surprise me if they feature heavily in saisons, they've got that, that kind of uh, moist, damp, uh, citrusy kind of, I don't know, it's... Uh, very noticeable in some of the saisons I've had and you don't need much as you can tell the you know it's just a few hot pellets um, uh, I mean obviously I'm just using a gallon I'm just making a gallon so it stands to reason so I'm going to add the first half on 60 minutes and the second half on half an hour to go So, um, as it starts to boil, as you can see on the top, it starts to get like a white foam. Um, essentially, when it gets to the boiling point, it's called, it builds what something that's called a hot break. And basically, it foams up like crazy. It's really important at this point that you uh, really have a control over the heat because if it boils over, uh, you're just going to get a total sticky mess uh, all over your kitchen, which is something that you don't want. So, I mean, where are we now? It's about 
it's just coming up to 90 degrees now another 10 degrees to go um, I'm on full pelt on the gas but having experienced making the beer on this particular hob before I know just to turn it down to pretty much uh, the lowest setting it's got and that will give a nice rolling boil you don't over boil it because essentially uh, you'll kill well you'll destroy the fermentable sugars and to dramatically reduce the amount of water that's uh, uh, produced at the uh, after 90 minutes so it's, uh, as you can see this is increasing second by second um, but I'm going to log off now because I, I need to get a hand on the uh, on the gas control so it doesn't spill over like I said so it's just about come up to a rolling boil um, the temperature on the thermometer we got from Wilco said about 105 uh, so I don't know if that's just the calibration of that or not so just worth keeping uh, keeping that in mind when you buy your thermometers um, I might even be tempted to get a digital one in the future but like I said uh, on the hour mark at the start we're going to add our hops half the uh, jade hops in you go sometimes that can cause it to bubble and boil over as you can see uh, there's a bit of action in there but I think I've got the gas level just about right so that's not going to happen um, so essentially you're just going to leave this now for an hour if you've got your gas level right or your, your hob or well you know uh, your halogen or whatever you're using heat right and you really uh, not you don't really need to check on it too much and it's worth having a look every now and again half an hour we're going to have the second lot of jade hops 55 minutes the jalapeno which by the way if you're in the UK you can buy from Sainsbury so uh, you don't have to go crazy uh, buying them online or anything as they stock them for a pound for a pack of about four so that's, uh, that's handy and keeps costs low. So uh, five minutes before the end of the boil, you add the uh, jalapeno. So if you want it a bit milder, obviously remove the seeds. If you like it a little bit spicier, keep the seeds in. Um, Home Denard, I'm a bit of a spice freak, so I've left it in doesn't really matter because it could always make it again minus the seeds if I was really wanted to tell the difference between the two it makes no odds which way around you do it and see the seeds in or seeds out uh, so after five minutes I'm going to pop it into the sink which I've just drained uh, I need to get rid of the bubbles I've got a couple of uh, litres of water that are frozen completely solid with ice Pop them there and try and cool it down as quickly as possible to 21 degrees, which is the ideal pitching rate for yeast. The quicker you do it, obviously, the less microbes you're going to get, etc., that can ruin your beer. Um, so, uh, really, I'm going to keep an eye on that. But one thing I needed to add, sorry, my bad, before, uh, before I do that is on the hour. You add uh, a third of a cup of Algarve. Now, this is just a quarter cup, so I'll add this and then a, a good squeeze of a bit more. Uh, <clears throat> sorry if that's upside down. <clears throat> there we go. Agarve nectar. Um, basically, there's two types you can get, and in the recipe book, it mentions uh, just agarve, and there's dark and a light agarve. And I tweeted the uh, uh, Brooklyn Brew Shop, and they they recommended the light, which uh, we had already from Tesco, no less. So uh, we got it as a pretty good deal. I think it was Tesco. And um, so you add that a third of a cup, and in the box there's some uh, candy sugar. Now I might even weigh that quickly before I pop it in. Um, just to get an idea of how much it is, uh, should I need to, you know, want to make it again, basically. So now's the uh, big cool down. 
Uh, I froze three one litre bottles of water. Um, but what I didn't realise is that the pan's rather big in relation to that. Um, but, you know, I filled, I filled it up with water uh, reasonably high up the side of the pan. So hopefully um, it just sort of keeps the water cool as possible in order to uh, chill the water as quickly as possible uh, in the next half hour. That's what the book recommends. We'll see when it comes out in half an hour. I don't hold my breath. In other batches, I've always run the cold water and just sort of circulated around the pan. And I've used this pan instead. Um, in hindsight, what I could have done is, as this is a jam pan with all the measurements on the side, is basically just transferred it to this pan for the cooling process about a minute before the end of the boil so it was sanitised. But, you know, you live and learn. So the uh, last stage is once we've cooled the uh, wort down to 20, well, 21, 22 degrees. Uh, I've got a big san sanitation bucket here with um, star san, where you mix uh, one ounce uh, with uh, five liters or five gallons, sorry, 25, 23 liters of water. Uh, so I've just had stuff soaking in there for now. Um, what we're going to do is pour the wort through the sieve via um, a, what do you call it? Colander? Yes, sieve. So, no, the... the uh, oh, funnel. Funnel. We're going to put it through the funnel into our sanitised jar. Um, and then we're going to pitch the yeast. So after we poured the wort through the sieve into the demijohn, which was all uh, sanitised, um, we just topped it up with a little bit of water to get it up to the one gallon mark. Uh, th like, threw the yeast in and gave it a right good shake uh, to aerate it and that helps uh, put air through the wort and feed the yeast, uh, which in turn help it become more healthy and produce more alcohol which is always good. Uh, this is overnight, I've woke up this morning and as you can see, the uh, the bubbler is rather active, probably more active than um, what it can handle. As you can see from the lid here, it's sort of bubbling out. Um, probably would, I'll probably change that for water rather than star sand, because that's what's creating that sort of bubble um, from that solution. Um, so yeah, I'm going to come back tonight and see where we're getting on, but you can see like a Krausen ring forming at the top, that's that ring, it's like a, like a crust almost. Um, uh, hopefully it doesn't get too active and come out and up through the top of the bubbler which I've had before on previous brews.